Good morning, I'm Dr. James, CEO and founder of Diamond Physicians. Uh, and we are going to be talking about some lifestyle modification, uh, 2016, new year, new you. So I wanna hit some, uh, some points. I wanna talk about nutrition, uh, fitness, lifestyle modification, and then I want to go over some, a Q&A session with you guys and, and see if we can figure out how to um, get you motivated for 2016 and, and change some uh, negative behaviors into, into positive, healthy lifestyle behavior. So with nutrition, I have um, you know, five basic principles. Uh, and those principles are low fat, low carbs, uh, high protein, um, more plant-based proteins versus animal-based proteins, no sugar, and exercise. So for the, 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 the low fat portion, you know, you wanna stay away from saturated fats. So anything that is fried, that's not good for you. Although it tastes really good, it's gonna increase your propensity to store, to make cholesterol, bad cholesterol, LDL particles, and have them deposit into your artery walls. So stay away from saturated fats. Um, good fats are unsaturated fats. So for instance, avocado, uh, almond butter, coconut oil, those are good fats. So when you're cooking, I like to use you know, olive oil or coconut oil. And depending on what your genetic propensity is for making bad cholesterol particles, and we have an innovative Diamond 360 advanced physical exam to let me know exactly what your genetic profile is, um, I can tell you whether or not coconut oil is good for you versus olive oil. But in general, olive oil is good for everyone, and you want to stay away from your uh, vegetable oil products. So sunflower seed oil, um, canola oil, those have a higher um, melting point, so they're good for cooking, but they also create more saturated fats. So I want you to stay away from those products. On the carbohydrate spectrum, so low carbs, I think everyone's kind of uh, knows a little bit about carbohydrates. There's a lot of uh, diets out there that are low carb diets. The uh, Atkins diet is basically a no carb diet. So you have to have balance. So you do want to have some carbohydrate in your diet, but you want to balance that with good carbs. So multigrain, um, if you're going to have pasta, it needs to be multigrain pasta. Um, stay away from white bread, starches, things like that, because those are going to be uh, transformed into sugars when you eat them. So for instance, a piece of white bread is just like taking nine packets of one gram sugar and eating them. So if you have a sandwich with two pieces of white bread, that's 18 grams of sugar. So that, that's a lot. And a lot of times we don't think of bread as sugar, but when it's broken down in the body, it's the same thing as ingesting sugar. You get a glycemic spike, and that's what you want to stay away from. Any questions on the fat and the carbohydrates? Yeah, what about rice? Great question. So with rice, stick with brown rice instead of white rice. So when I go to Chipotle and have my salad bowl, I always have brown rice instead of the white rice. Same thing with um, a tortilla. You want to have a, a wheat tortilla instead of plain white flour tortilla because those grains are, are fiber and those help you um, metabolize that carbohydrate longer over a longer period of time and you don't get as, as high as a glycemic spike. Orange. Um, the orange itself is fantastic. So, and that's a great segue into the next topic, which is going to be sugar. So, an orange itself, and any fruit for that matter, uh, has fiber in it. So, you never want to separate the carbohydrate from the fiber. So, orange juice, although it tastes really good, is actually going to give you a glycemic spike. So, the whole orange, fantastic. Uh, putting it in a juicer. And, and making orange juice, you want to drink that in limited quantities. Does that, does that make sense? But what about like a smoothie? What if you were to take your fruit and just dump the whole thing in a blender? That's okay. perfect. I do that every morning. I have a Vitamix high-powered blender. I dump all my fruits and vegetables uh, into the Vitamix and create a nice smoothie that doesn't give me a glycemic spike because I'm retaining all that fiber. Uh, when you do make a smoothie, you want it to be 70% green, and 30% fruit. A lot of times people make mistakes with uh, making just a fruit smoothie, and you know fruit tastes great, but again, when you have all those sugars, 
you can get a glycemic spike. So you want to make sure that you have 70% greens and 30% and fruits. And don't, um, <laughs> when I was little, my brother used to make my mom actually peel grapes. Uh, you want that skin, you want that fiber in there. So, you know, put the whole, the whole fruit in there. Not the rind, but um, uh, the orange uh, pulp is, is good for that. So with sugar, you, wanna, you really wanna limit your sugar quantities. And I think this is the hardest aspect uh, in the American diet because sugar is in everything that we eat. Uh, ketchup, a packet of ketchup has four grams of sugar in it. So you think about that. You put three or four packets of ketchup on a, on a sandwich or on some french fries, then you're, in, you're, you're ingesting you know, 12 to 16 grams of sugar. So make sure you're looking at the back of your products that you're eating and really take a look at the amount of sugar. So with a protein bar, like this one, you wanna keep it less than seven grams of sugar. So let's see how Sarah did here. Ah, fantastic. Less than, less than one gram. So this is probably isn't real chocolate. It's probably chocolate flavored. But um, with your protein bars, I really, if you can get it less than seven and, and really less than four grams of sugar is, is fantastic. Um, be careful though with a lot of packaged foods in general because packaged foods have a lot of omega-6s. And omega-6 fatty acids are not good for you, omega-3s are. So you wanna make sure you have a nice omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. So just be careful with a lot of packaged goods. But you know, one protein bar, that's not bad per day. Do they say on the back that they have omega-6? Like anything processed is gonna have a lot of omega-6s. So unfortunately, anything in a package, what is this? Pumpkin seeds? Okay, pumpkin seeds, no, because pumpkin seeds, they just took the seed and put it in a bag. But uh, a, lot a lot of sodium because they want to keep it fresh. Um, but anything in a package, so if you're eating um, any type of snack product, that's probably going to have a lot of omega 6s. And it's tough, so, but fresh is always better. And um, package isn't as good as something fresh. So, Sugar is hidden in everything, so be real careful. Make sure you're looking at the back of the nutrients, uh, the, the nutrition panel, and limit your sugar intake. Again, we, don't, we want to stay euglycemic, so that means the same blood sugar level throughout the day. So you also want to eat every two to three hours. You never want to skip breakfast. Breakfast really is the most important meal of the day. So you want to have uh, a nice balanced breakfast. I like to have uh, a nice plant-based protein shake, and then I'll have some uh, some oatmeal, something with some grains. I actually have a gluten-free uh, GMO or non-GMO uh, oatmeal that I love and it gives you a little bit of bulk with some fiber there so it sustains your hunger. And then I'll put almond butter and uh, coconut oil in my protein shake also to, to allow you to kind of have that satiety throughout the morning because when you eat healthy, man, it goes by fast. You get hungry really quickly and it's hard to sustain. When you're hungry, your body is storing fat. So from an evolutionary standpoint, your, your body doesn't know that you have a refrigerator or you have this, this packaged good that you can access quickly. Uh, you know, we, we were still in this hunter-gatherer mo mode where we had to go out and, and forage and, and find food and it took time and we were burning calories doing that. So our bodies haven't caught up with modern day revolutions such as refrigerated goods, uh, fast food, stores on every corner that you can access food. So when we're hungry, the body goes into survival mode and, and it stores fat because we didn't know how long we were gonna be fasting for. So when you feel that hunger on, uh, coming on, think of it as, okay, my body's storing fat, I need to eat something, but I need to eat something healthy. Carrot, celery, uh, an apple, an orange, just something, some nuts, some pumpkin seeds, something to stimulate metabolism and make sure that you're not going into fat storage mode. Does that make sense? Okay, so low carbs, low fat, no sugar, uh, protein. Did we talk about protein? Okay, so protein, what I, what I like is, and, and there's a great movie out there, it's called Forks Over Knives. Uh, so I want you guys to watch that, that's your homework. Forks Over Knives, and then another one is Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. And there's actually a sequel to that now as well. But those, those movies, those documentaries, really talk about 
animal proteins versus plant-based proteins. And in America, you know, we are all about animal-based proteins, especially here in Texas. You know, I'm, uh, I'm from Texas, I love a great steak, but animal protein, especially red meat, is highly inflammatory. Red meat increases your, your risk for colon cancer, um, increases infl inflammation in the body. With our Diamond 360 exam, we can actually figure out what inflammatory markers are elevated and try and reverse those. But plant-based proteins are going to be much better for you. So vegan, vegetarian diet, it's fantastic. Uh, I've tried it, it's very hard. I was vegan for, uh, for two weeks. And um, my wife and I were arguing a lot, we were hangry, and it didn't work out. So then we went to vegetarian, and now we've kind of settled on kind of a pescatarian lifestyle where I incorporate um, fish uh, and really stick to plant-based proteins. So you have to find the right niche for you. So I can't sit here and say, hey, you guys gotta go vegan because it's really hard or you have to go vegetarian because it's also very challenging. But you have to find the right mix and the right balance for you. And anything in, in moderation, as long as you uh, have achieved your goals, is, is okay. And I actually encourage uh, one day a week, once you've reached your goal, to eat whatever you want. It helps stimulate the metabolism, keeps your body uh, guessing when it comes to metabolizing a food product, uh, and it actually can help stimulate your metabolism. What do you think about tofu? <sighs> tofu, if it's the right kind of tofu is, is, is good, you know, but, but sometimes soy-based products can be highly processed. So you have to find something that isn't as processed. I read that it mimics estrogen and it's not exactly healthy for you. Yeah, and, and, it, and that's one of those processed things. So um, anything that's processed can increase certain hormone levels and those can be detri detrimental because estrogen actually increases your propensity to store fat. So, um, and it's a process. So with men and testosterone, uh, the more adipose tissue, the more fat cells you have, the testosterone breaks down into estrogen and then creates more fat and breaks down more testosterone and it's kind of this, this cascade, this negative feedback loop that's, that's not beneficial. Are there any food guidelines out there that we should follow, like other than lean cuisine, paleo? You know, I like, I like the paleo. I've read a lot about the paleo um, diet. Uh, I don't agree with some of, the, obviously, the meat choices. I think in the paleo you can have bacon and, and some other um, products. Pork in general has a lot of sodium, uh, and bacon in general has a lot of uh, nitrites, and nitrites are, are inflammatory. So I think um, the best one out there is the Mediterranean diet, and that basically outlines exactly what I just went through. It's plant-based, uh, olive oil, uh, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, and, and, and good fats, a balance of good fats as well. So what plant-based proteins do you use? I have hemp strong. protein um, in my shakes and Brazilian nut protein. Uh, you can go to Whole Foods or Central Market and they have, have, they have shelves of different types of kind of, I think they're actually called vegan proteins. So you know that if it does have that vegan label on it, you know for sure there's no animal protein in it. Uh, now one animal protein that I do like uh, are eggs. You know, I love eggs. Um, I try and remove the, the yolk of the egg, the yellow part, that's where the bad cholesterol is. However, when you do do that, you do modify some of the, the overall protein content of the egg. So I, um, I do a balance. I do half egg whites and, and half uh, the whole egg when I, when I make some, when I make eggs. Uh, you have to do it based on you, so I need to know your cholesterol profile. Uh, several eggs a day for somebody with normal cholesterol is perfectly okay. But several eggs a day for somebody with high cholesterol is, is not okay. That can actually boost your, your, your bad cholesterol, your LDL particles. What about protein mixes? Put in the, uh, vegetables. You know, I like just protein itself. I don't like the products that have a bunch of other stuff in there because although it's approved by the FDA, it's not regulated heavily by any governing body. So basically the FDA comes in and says, this product will not kill you. But it doesn't, um, there's no clinical trials, there's no um, evidence base for most of these products out there, these supplements, and that's why the supplement industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. And unfortunately, most of the supplements do not live up to what they say they are. So I try and simplify the process and um, go to products that are, you know, one thing. So if I'm gonna buy a plant-based protein 
that's all that's going to be in there. And then I use that to make my own smoothies. And I try and m use as many ingredients that I can, you know, from, from my pantry. So I'm going to use a couple scoops of a protein powder, and I'm going to put, you know, uh, bok choy and chard and spinach and uh, all these different leafy green products. And then I'm going to put my own, uh, you know, organic um, fruits in that smoothie so you know what you're getting. And that's the most important part, I think, about meal preparation, is if you can create time at home and create these meals yourself, you know you're putting a healthy product into your body. That's great, because then it's not that impulse to just grab it. Right. And, and this is all great. about preparation. You know, I've, you know I, I, I always preach prior preparation prevents poor performance. So if you can, um, 30 minutes a day, either when you get home, or in the morning, I prefer to do it at night. Prepare your meals, uh, figure out what you, what you want to eat. I can help you with a food a menu so you're not thinking about choices and, and create you know, 14, 15 different meals uh, that you have uh, in your repertoire. And then you, have a, a, you can go to the grocery store once a week, get the meals planned out for the week, and then you know, create them each night, and you're ready to go the next day. There's no thought. You just you have your meals, you have your snacks laid out, you have your shake ready to go. Um, I'm a big fan of the protein shake in the morning and then really the green smoothie throughout the day. So uh, a lot of times when I'm really wanting to get into a fat burning mode, I will do a, a protein shake in the morning. And again, you got to have your good fats in that shake, your protein and your carbohydrate. The fruit is my carbohydrate. You want to have a well-balanced shake. Uh, and then I'll have a, a green juice, I call them, which I do in the Vitamix. Uh, for, for lunch, and then I'll have uh, a healthy dinner, some type of fish, vegetable, and snacks throughout. So nuts are a great snack. Uh, I have Fiber One cereal is my, my favorite little snack, and I eat it dry. And it looks like, uh, my wife says it looks like gerbil food, uh -huh. but it's packed with fiber, and it just keeps you, keeps you from, from, from being hungry throughout the day. And it simulates your metabolism. That fiber is going to keep things moving through your GI tract, and it's really good for fat burning. So I recommend you know, 14 grams of fiber a day and just one cup. Fiber One cereal has 14 grams of fiber. How about water? Oh, great, great point, Sarah. Water is so critical to everything. All your cellular processes, uh, you have to have water to function. And, you know, we don't drink enough water. So as a minimum, you're supposed to have eight glasses of water. You know, that's 96 ounces, and that's a lot. But it's so important for fat burning, for health, for uh, your skin, for longevity. If you can really make an effort to drink as much water as you can, that will pay huge dividends. And, and, and by drinking water, just by cutting out the other stuff that we drink, that also pays, yeah, pays huge dividends. Sodas, I think we all know that sodas are not good for us. Um, even diet sodas. Diet sodas, aspartame, uh, they, they cause a glycemic spike. And there's a study that showed that um, drinking soda, one diet soda a day for two years, added five pounds of abdominal fat, two inches to, to, to the waist. What about dairy, skim milk? You know. Dairy is really not good for you. <laughs> and we, in, 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 in my generation, grew up, you know, I drank a ton of milk as a child. Humans aren't meant to drink cow's milk, period. So, you know, I love cheese. Um, what about almond milk? Almond milk is fantastic. And we actually make our own almond milk uh, at home. So you can take some almonds, you soak them overnight so they absorb the water, and then uh, put them in the Vitamix, uh, a little bit of vanilla, and blend it up. It's fantastic. And, and, and now we know that this is pure almond milk. There's nothing else in it. So that's what, that's what I do. Tell us about the Vitamix. Uh, we need to call Vitamix. I need to be a spokesperson for the right. Vitamix. But the Vitamix is unbelievable. It's expensive. Bed Bath Beyond and 20% coupon and get it 20% off. I think they have some models that are like $3.99, but it goes all the way up to 
you know, 499, uh, 550. But man, it has like a lawn mower engine in it, and you can put an avocado seed in there, and it will grind it up. It will pulverize and 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 liquefy pretty much any food product. So it's a great way to ensure that you're getting the nutrients that uh, that we need. And uh, you know, juicing used to be this this big fad, but again, juicing you don't want to separate the carbohydrate from the uh, the fiber. So I really encourage you, if you can, to get a Vitamix, and man, it, it, it is a life changer, it really is. you can put the entire fruit in there. Exactly, you get everything. The skin, everything. Vegetable, everything. And then you can also, we make soups with it. Um, you, can, you can do so much with the Vitamix. It's, it's worth the investment, it really is. I heard that you can put like food in there and then it can make it hot. It, mm -hmm. spins, it, it spins so high of RPM, it can make like awesome. warm, warm soup. Um, really good. But for the everyday blender, we'll achieve all the smoothies anyway. Yeah, we I have a NutriBullet too, so we use both. Uh, NutriBullet for our smoothies that we make in the morning, and then the, the Vitamix really for the green smoothie that you really you know you don't want a lot of pulp and leaves. It's, it doesn't the texture isn't nice. So the, that Vitamix, if you throw an avocado in there too, man, it is smooth. It Do really is good. Not take the seed out. Is there any but fruit the, that the is good to have the seed in that you wouldn't particularly, or like a banana peel, or what are? Um, I don't really juice any of that thick of a of a skin or a rind. You can, but like there's some recipes that call for for lemon rind, but or orange orange peel, but it is so bitter, it's almost not palatable. But if you can tolerate it, it, it is good for you. It's just fiber. What about fishes? Uh, fish. I like salmon. Salmon has a lot of omega threes, a lot of omega threes. Just be careful with the skin. A lot of the, the the fish skin will have mercury in it. So if you're eating a ton of fish, make sure you're not eating the skin. Um, typically, one to two grams of omega-3s is sufficient. Uh, however, new studies have, are coming out that high-dose omega-3s are really good for brain health. So I actually do a four gram a day uh, goal, and I'm, I'm trying to promote brain health down the line. So it's supposed to kind of stave off Alzheimer's, um, some other brain abnormalities that can happen, dementia down the line. So high dose omega-3s, not gonna hurt you unless you're APOE4, but if you're APOE4, you have to come and do a Diamond 360 with me for me to tell you that. What did you say? Um, there's, a, there's a genotype called APOE that allows me to tell you if omega-3s are good for you or bad for you. Are they pro-inflammatory uh, or, or, or do they stave off inflammation? So we'd have to do some genetic testing. 25% of the population is APOE4. And if you are APOE4, um, greater than one gram a day is gonna be pro-inflammatory. So make a list of five things that each of you want to change. And then at the end of the 21 days, you can kind of grade, your scale, grade yourself on a scale of one to 10 on how you think you did. So if your goal was to um, say you're eating chocolate every day, and my goal is to eat chocolate, limit that to once a week. So give yourself goals that have something that you can actually have a, an objective data point that you can say, okay, I, I, I did this this many times and my goal was this many. So at the end, you can grade yourself on a scale of one to 10 and see how well you, you achieved that goal. I think that would be a good way to kind of level the playing field. You know, BMI is tough um, because um, just because you are slender or have a BMI within normal limits doesn't mean you're healthy. So if you're taking a lot of steps and you're exercising more, you might not lose that much weight, but you are becoming much more healthy for you. So I try and take you know, BMI out of it when I'm doing you know, group goals and more focus on healthy choices, healthy lifestyle. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna limit sitting to four hours a day today. I'm gonna take 2,000 steps. I'm gonna to exercise today for 22 minutes, okay? 
I'm going to sleep eight hours tonight. Sleep is a huge one. You should definitely incorporate sleep uh, into your, your challenge. Uh, rejuvenation is critical in what we do and, and how we live, and I think that is something that uh, people neglect, their sleep. You, know, you, you can do everything right, and if you're sleeping three hours a night, you're going to be so stressed uh, from an adrenal standpoint that it's going to negate all the great things that you did during the day. What about lifting weights? Lifting weights is fantastic. You should definitely incorporate lifting, which would be anaerobic exercises, in with your aerobic exercises. You want to strengthen the muscle. Um, you want to uh, stretch before you do any type of weightlifting or aerobic training. I think people forget to stretch. That decreases your propensity for injury. And you don't want to stretch cold muscles either. So you should definitely warm up, do a couple laps, jumping jacks, something to warm up the muscles before you stretch as well. You know, that's a great question. Um, the sooner the better, because when you're breaking down protein, uh, your muscles are, are, are made out of uh, amino acids, protein. So when you're breaking down those muscle fibers, you do want to have some protein to help regenerate. So yeah, it doesn't have to be right when you finish. Uh, but you know, 30 minutes to an hour within that time period, uh, that can help. I like to eat something that's going to last, so something high fiber, uh, something with some protein in it that will last you throughout the workout, uh, unless I'm working out first thing in the morning. So if I'm working out first thing in the morning, um, I either just drink some water or have a protein shake, because um, I really want to get into that, that catabolic, that fat burning stage as fast as I can. Uh, so it just depends on when you're working out. If it's in the in the afternoon, you definitely want to eat something. You don't want to get light, lightheaded, uh, low blood sugar before you're working out. But in the morning, you know, the studies have shown that if you can work out uh, either fasting or near fasting, that actually can, can boost your metabolism and, and boost your, your fat burn window. So it makes a difference if you work out in the morning versus in the evening? You know, I like to work out in the morning. I think it's also personal preference. I can't say hey, is, is one better than the other? I can't think of any studies that have shown morning workouts are better than afternoon workouts. But if you work out in the morning, from a lifestyle perspective, you're done. You get it out the way, you start your day out, you typically have more energy throughout the day, and you can then start the taper down process, where if I work out at night, you know, you're releasing endorphins, you're awake, uh, you can affect your your circadian rhythm and in, in, in your sleep, uh, but everyone's everyone's different. Some people have problems with that. Some people some people do. But I like to start my day out with a workout. So you do like fast cardio in the morning? Yeah, I do. I try and do my cardio in the morning. Um, if I do work out in the evening, then I like to do like yoga, some kind of um, calming exercises, and I think that is a great segue into stress and managing stress. You know, you go throughout the whole day and you have all these tasks and all these things to complete. You can be very stressed out around five or six. So I think that is a great time to do some yoga, lift weights to relieve that stress, but still do your cardio in the morning. New year, new you. I do have another question. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fun. <laughs> I have a question on portion control. Like, how do you measure everything? Do you have measuring cups? Like, you know? You know, my philosophy in portion control is important. But I am from the nutrient partitioning school. And, and, and that school of thought says that if you put it in your body and it's good and it's wholesome, then your body will place it in the right buckets and you don't really have to worry about 
how much you're eating. Like if you eat nothing but organic broccoli uh, and salmon, like you are not going to gain weight. But if you want to lose weight faster, then absolutely. Portion control will help you lose weight faster because it's simple math. Calories in, calories out. You have to burn more calories than you intake to lose a pound. What about drinking the water before you eat a meal? Does that help with? That helps with satiety, absolutely. So that's a great trick to kind of fool your body into thinking that it's full. You know, 12 ounces of water right before you eat, and um, you'll have, kind of have that, that sensation that, that you are full. So, you know, my advice to you would be more portion control in the fact that vegetables should be the largest portion of your plate, okay? Uh, then protein, then carbohydrate. But I can't really tell you, you know, you should have a cup of broccoli or a... Uh, so Four like ounces. For snacks, like, there's not eight almonds you have to eat for a snack. It can just be like however mm. much you need. Yeah, I, I like to snack throughout the day. You know, we always have almonds um, on the uh, the kitchen island, so you just walk by there and you're just you're just snacking. Oh, I got fiber one. I'm just I'm snacking all day, and that's really the best way to to, to keep your metabol metabolism stimulated. But if you you know you can set an alarm and say, okay, every two hours, I'm going to eat something, something nutritious, okay? And that, that can help you, remind you to eat something. Because we get busy throughout the day. We're working hard, we're accomplishing tasks, we're doing incredible things for Real News PR, we're making it happen. And we can forget to eat. So, a little alarm every two hours. <laughs> Meditation. Yes, I used to be really bad about that. <laughs> One, one quick snippet on meditation. You can meditate at any time. If you're feeling stressed and, and having problems focusing, quick meditation, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Um, clear your mind. That's a great technique to reduce stress. Five deep breaths. Uh, that is also a great way to reduce your heart rate, reduce your stress level. And, and get yourself back down to baseline. And there's apps and things on your phone now. Maybe the Fitbit has one that says when your heart rate gets to a certain level and you're not exercising, okay, calm down, take some breaths, quick meditation, uh, and then continue working again. Do you have any questions? This is great. It really is. Fantastic. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Hope you gave, guys, gave you guys some pearls of wisdom. And um, you know we can do this again, you know once a quarter, whenever whenever you want, and, and we can really um, look at the changes that you've made and, and try and dive deeper into your your fitness journey and your and your health and wellness journey. Is this um, uh, testing that you talked about where you come in and look like if coconut oil is good for you? Is that covered under? Our no, unfortunately, it's not. Um, that testing is a little bit expensive, so it's totally a la carte from the Diamond uh, Concierge Membership Program. Does insurance cover that at all? Yes and no. So we, we, um, we can give you CPT codes that you can use to try and get some things reimbursed, but most of the things that we do um, are not reimbursable because the insurance system is based on having a diagnosis code to bill for, and everything that we do is trying to find things that you don't know that you have. So when I, when someone, if I'm, when I used to be in the insurance model, someone comes into my office and I want to get an x-ray, I have to have a reason for that x-ray, okay? They hurt their forearm, I'm really out of fracture. Well, with what I do, there is no reason other than to, to find out if you're healthy or not. So there's no code that I can say, uh, I need to figure this out because you might be an increased risk for heart attack and stroke. Doesn't, the insurance world doesn't work like that, uh, which is why it's flawed, kind of broken. You know, insurance should cover what we do uh, because what we do is clinically proven to prevent heart attack, stroke, and diabetes. The number one killer in America is heart disease. Has been for the last 18 years. You know, 850,000 people die every year from a heart attack, and doesn't get a lot of press. 
Maybe we can change that. Um, you, we would do a hemoglobin A1C and a fasting insulin. We would start with those two, and those tests are very expensive. <laughs>